Hello, from Atlas. You are now flipping over to the B side. Hello and welcome to Cinema Craptaculous Presents B-Sides, where we dig through the streaming pile of crap that the internet has to offer to find that rare gem. And if you're listening to us, please rate and like us wherever you listen to us, because it uh, it helps get the Cinema Craptaculous word out there. This is Dave, and with me are my uncrappy co-hosts, Tara and Adam. We're taking it to the underground in this 1993 trans-Pacific thriller, where the title kind of says it all. American <laughs> Yakuza. <laughs> Here's how Wikipedia describes the movie. When Nick Davis, Vigo Mortensen, leaves prison, he is hired to work in a warehouse owned by the Japanese Yakuza. When the place is assaulted by the Italian mafia led by Dino Campanella, Nick rescues and saves the life of Shuji, oh man, I'm a terrible person, Shuji Sawamoto, who yeah. is the representative of the Yakuza interests in America. Shuji hires Nick to work for Yakuza and becomes his godfather in the family after his oath to join Yakuza. However, Nick is a lonely FBI undercover agent assigned to penetrate the criminal organization. When the FBI discovers that Campanella is organizing a massive attack to destroy the Yakuza, Nick's boss, Littman, calls off the operation to leave the dirty work to the Italian mafia. But the connection of Nick with Suji and his goddaughter, Yuko, force him to help the Japanese family. I wish I'd, I'd asked how to say that name better <laughs> before I'd done this. And now I'm an awful person. Do you want to give it another go? No. <laughs> nope. I no. like it. I like it. No. As it is. <laughs> We're going to stick with my terrible, embarrassing closet pronunciation of uh, that name. By the way, in the movie, because we're all dumb white people, Vigo Mortensen's character calls him Shu. So, like, oh, that's right, Vigo, he does. That's true. Yes. Not even yeah. Vigo could do it. Uh, a, a little backstory, by the way, uh, <laughs> listeners at home. We did Reminiscence not too long ago. And during that time, I was like, oh, look, it's Hugh Jackman. We should do a back to back Hugh Jackman movie. Oh, look, here's a movie with what I assume is Hugh Jackman. Nope, it's Vigo wow. Mortensen. That's how wow. blind I am to beautiful white men. Like, they're just like, they're all the same to me. This is they're all interchangeable. The same. You, know, you know what? I'm fine with that interchangeability. I'd be happy to interchange them personally. <laughs> They are a dip. Oh, wait a minute. Now, hold on. That's not true. Because there is a warmth to Mr. Jackman that does not exist with Mr. Mortensen. Mr. Mortensen would be a Ooh. much different dating experience, I feel. I, I, I think it would be I, much weirder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit would get weird. Yeah, but he's so beautiful. <laughs> He is. Be He's intense. a beautiful man. We would definitely be intense. After watching this, I, I was a little like, is there anything to Vigo? Because he <gasps> seemed <gasps> dead behind the eyes in this. Oh, like, Dave. Dave. Yeah, we I are just going found to... him kind of like, wasn't sure if he wanted to be in the movie or <gasps> not. He was uncommitted to the movie. And he was like going through the scenes, but just a little kind of like, I may decide not to come in tomorrow. Dave, I I don't think I've ever disagreed with you more. Like actually some of my some of my notes, like I did look it up. First of all, my second note is Vigo is so hot, which by the way, was just <laughs> it's just true. But it's one of his first movies. Like it's a, it's one of his earlier things. Yep. And I just I I yes. immediately saw like why he got so much I thought from this movie, like how he got so much work after this because there's something so uniquely interesting about just watching him and what he sort of like sure. just his sort of presence and what he brings to stuff and and then at the turn when you wow. discover he is an FBI agent I didn't see that coming I literally was like oh I didn't he either he convinced me that he's like this fucking prisoner like assassin guy and I was like whoa even like you know this movie had its moments where you're like okay Vigo that scene was a little phoned in but I was like oh I see I saw the you see the early inklings of him becoming a really prolific like a really good actor I thought uh, you know I spent the majority of this movie playing the is this racist game and <laughs> the answer is I... yes the answer is yes <laughs> Well, well, yeah, okay, yes, yes, but, yes, but. I yes, then but. went, well, what can I compare this movie to? And I'm like, well, this movie is like a Donny Brasco, or like, sure. I basically took the Italian mafia and interchanged it with the, you know, Yakuza. And I go, were they doing equally racist things in those, like, Italian-American films that represented the mafia as they did in this Yakuza movie? And I actually kind of, I kind of think it's on par. Like, hmm. okay, here's what I think, because I think that's what the analogy I went to is like, what movies can I compare this to was other Yakuza movies, yeah. which was like, um, 
oh god, what Mel Gibson and Danny Glover in uh, Lethal, Lethal Weapon? Weapon? Le- Lethal Weapon Four, I think it was. Yes, is they go up against the Yakuza. Oh, that's right. Um, the other movie was Rush Hour. Okay. Now, okay. I think having seen both of those movies somewhat recently, they are very problematic. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Sir. I don't yes. think. I, I think there's ri- like kind of a racism in this movie, but it didn't feel problematic. It didn't feel like they were making fun of. They were just kind of highlighting while the characters themselves were Americans and slightly racist. You, d- does that make sense? Yeah, I, yeah. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I, you know, it's like th- there were just certain moments in the movie that were really well, super problematic for me. Like, for instance, uh, so there is a uh, a female uh, love interest Ugh. for uh, yeah. Vigo, right? Who starts it out as like she's like a, an interior designer. Is that what she is? An interior decorator yes yes interior decorator which because the subplot of the movie is her doing the interior design of this condo that uh uh shu had bought for him right right so initially you know she she it's presented with like this weird weird uh, like she starts in certain scenes being like that's not proper we're out in public we shouldn't be in any way like physical or you know sexual and then it'll cut to like scenes where she's very like americanized and comfortable and then it'll cut to another scene where she's dressed up like a geisha after he yes. gets accepted into the Yakuza clan and then it cuts <laughs> yes. to a, a scene which is like a very 90s right. like sex scene from mm-hmm. you know yeah. those those type of movies where you, you kind of see a little nudity and it's you know the hair and all that crap or like, or it's an easy jazz music video <laughs> yes. yes easy jazz music video yes uh, but yeah it's it, it, there was just a number of times where I'm like I don't exactly know so I kind of had to throw that idea out for now. And I figure maybe yeah. by the end of this conversation, I'll have a better idea of how I exactly feel about the racism. Well, but, I think yeah. I think as far as the race, like, they treat... They, I don't feel like there's any part of them, like, making fun of Yakuza or trying to, like, belittle it or trying to... You know, just like in the Godfather movies, it's like, this is just what this is, right? It's a... It's, sure. this is yes. how This is how this world exists. This is how it works. And this is how, like a white person's version of it because it's still it's still organized crime right is what we're sort of right. saying it's like it's organized crime there's stuff that's gone bad in it and we should deal with that okay fine it just happens to be that the white people who deal with these people are don't like they actively don't try to understand it so that's what makes the racist sort of overtones a little bit agreed however agreed. Yeah. I found like, and again, this is just a thing I do once in a while, only when it really snaps out to me. So only one woman has a a line of dialogue and there's a naked woman in the shower for 40 minutes into this movie. Oh, yeah. The the interior designer, she's arranging flowers in the warehouse, which at the beginning, you're just like, oh, yeah, let's make this warehouse prettier with that one (laughs) vase of flowers. I missed that. And she's just like, she takes like a time. And by the way, never looks up to see Vigo staring at her like a creeper. Yeah. Yeah, okay. a real big creeper. <laughs> well, I mean, he did just get out of prison. I mean, like, that's not an right. excuse to be a creeper, but... It, he was staring at her through a window. Like, he, I was it, like, it's the I was reason to... I use. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Dave. Anyways, she has one line of dialogue where she's... I forget. Like, he, she's bringing out a painting, and she says one line to Vigo. Okay, fine. We don't have another woman in the movie say anything until the woman who robs Vigo when he's sitting outside of the warehouse. Like, it's like... A, like, she's like, holds him up with another robber at the car that's that's 40 minutes into the movie there's been two women with two lines of dialogue and right. a naked woman in a shower right. just, just okay just so like point what out i'm hearing fact. is <laughs> off to a good start off to a good start <laughs> so i'm saying the racism is on par with the sexism in this fair, movie we'll just fair. say that oh yeah but well, you, you the, know what it, it's innate for 1993 Exactly. Yes. But but some things I will say about this movie. R- right off the bat, I was actually impressed with the cinematography. Like the Agreed. opening scene. Uh, so the, the movie starts with Vigo getting out of prison. Like he's been in prison. He gets out of prison. And then he struggles to find a job and then lands a job as a longshoreman. Which, by the way, if you get out of prison and immediately get a job as a longshoreman, like that's a really solid like career path that you're on. Like that's a really, that's really <laughs> yeah, you're impressive. A 
Yeah, you're, yeah. you went. Yeah, you went from nothing to teamster. Like that's really <laughs> that's impressive. I'm just saying. Um, and I get why he got it because Vigo was amazing at driving a forklift in this movie. By the way, yes, I don't he. Know well, I had a note about that. I was like, well, no <laughs> shit, he got a job. Look at him wheel that forklift. <laughs> Look at him go, and I think he was actually driving it. I wouldn't be surprised if Vigo's doing it. Like he probably spent it, six months learning how to drive a forklift. First of all, I want just as like not that everybody should go do this, but Art's a teamster. My husband is a teamster. He's a driver. You have to learn how to operate the forklift because they have them on all the studio lots. It's a three-hour class, Adam. You can learn to use it in three hours. Not like Vigo did. Not like Vigo. It takes a lifetime to master. Wow. Okay. I'm going to step back then. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, so going back to what I was saying, so that whole first five minutes of the movie is just a montage of all these moments of, like, Vigo getting out of prison, getting the job. And it's beautifully shot. Like, the use of angles, shadows, light. Like, I was super impressed. I'm like, wait a minute. What movie are we about to watch? I thought we were just going to watch Vigo kicking ass. By the way, I miss action star Viggo Morton. Can I just say Me that? Too. Like I really Me too. miss him. He was he's fun as an action star. Like I, he's great. I- it took me a minute to be like, oh, right, this is Aragorn, dude. Like, this is, like, a guy who knows, like, Lord of the Rings. Like, the man the man can handle handle himself. It's fun to see him back in these roles. What What was the movie where he was a Russian and he has that whole naked shower scene? Where oh, he, like, uh. God, that, 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 sh- that movie was unreal. Well, yeah, because you got to see Vigo oh, I naked. Love, I love the fact that yeah, you're like, so oh, woman's in the shower. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> and then your first reference to another Vigo Mortensen movie is... What's the one where he was showering naked? <laughs> no, because because what Dave, was that one? Dave, huh. because Adam was referencing him being a good like fighting, and this he has a like a five minute naked shower fight scene. Dave, I didn't write the movie; I just enjoyed it. <laughs> was it called like sure American Violence? The movie you dreamed up. Was it American it was like Violence? Like a, it was another. It started with American. Oh, that was yeah, funny. I don't know. Anyways, but, I digress, uh, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> but I miss action star Vigo Morton. I, I thought we were going to be watching, like, literally a direct-to-video movie from 1993. First of all, I was blown away that Viggo Mortensen was in anything before Lord of the Rings, much less Young Guns 2. I was looking at his was IMDb he? to oh. see, if, yeah. Yeah, he's oh. been in a couple of things that you're like, wait, what? Yeah. But I thought it was going to be, like, a direct-to-video, cheesy kind of movie, and it really wasn't. Right. Um, but I would say for that opening, one thing that every the cinematographer must have been like is like, can we get a giant 1,000 kilowatt light <laughs> right here to shine directly into the lens? Yep. And then we'll we'll we'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> I, it's it, it's funny because I I along with the light, it's so smoky in the room he rents. Yes. I was like I was like yes. I was like, man, L.A. smog was really bad in the 90s because no one questioned like how smoky the inside of his hotel room was. Well, this is. <laughs> the 90s yeah. all everyone was smoking in the room like all the grips the dp you know Vigo yes, when he yes. was like, they were all smoking that's what that was it was natural that's haze. true <laughs> really, just, we need some more smoke get a couple more pas in here <laughs> and this and this is also pasadena in a form i've never seen pasadena in like this is right? a it's dirty pasadena? down and out pasadena like <laughs> wait what did it's they pasadena do? Yeah, it's Pasadena. It like... He stays at the Pasadena Hotel. Like, this is... That's... Okay, first of all, I've been to that hotel. That's a downtown L.A. hotel. How dare they try to pass it off as Pasadena? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, these guys are just like, for instance, Vigo saves the boss of the Yakuza, and then two or three days later, the Yakuza figure out where the their boss is, and they just roll up into the hotel where Vigo is staying, and the guy behind the desk is like, well, the Yakuza are here. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't bat an eye. He's like, yep, it's the Yakuza day. And then, uh, like, <laughs> Pasadena, for all those people who don't live in California, is... <sighs> It's, it's not super an, uh, nice. It's a nice yeah. upscale old money. Yeah. The yeah, Rose old money. That's what it is. is. The Rose Parade is in Pasadena, everybody. Some of the most beautiful old homes. Yeah. You Little see old them. lady lives in Pasadena, you know? Yes. It's like, it's a nice place. So when they're they're kind of suggesting it's not, it, it was very odd. I just didn't understand that choice. But it is 1993, so maybe Pasadena was a shit show back then. Right? That's, tr- that's true. That's true. Who knows? <laughs> that's a great point. No, I don't think it was. <laughs> hey there. We'll be right back. And now, back to the show. Um, the other thing this movie made me realize is how how hard must it have been to be a cop before cell phones, right? Where it's just like you have like like you have all this information, like the shit's going on, you're like, oh fuck, I hope there's a payphone nearby. <laughs> 
like, how did any crime? Someone get me carrier pigeon. How did we get anything done? How did the world get anything done? I don't know. There is a part where, so uh, Shu invites Vigo to kind of join the organization because he's like, oh, you saved my life. And I think you're really good at what you do. I don't know what it is that you do, but you're really good at it. Mm -hmm. Um, And you look great taking a shower. (laughs) Do you want to join me? (laughs) And, And in this scene, Shu offers him wild turkey whiskey. Yep. Oh, right. Uh, in the back of the limo. And I was like, wouldn't he have something better than wild turkey? <laughs> like, wild turkey is like what you get at 7-Eleven if you're 19. No, Dave. And- he, he made an assessment of this dumb prisoner white man in his back sheet. And he's that like, is this- an absolute good point. I'm that, surprised that's... he didn't follow it up with a Schlitz. <laughs> he might have. We don't know. <laughs> and no. then about the, he offers him the whiskey and he goes, by the way, I'm going to a meeting with like the Italian, my Italian counterpart in the city. I need you to watch my back. And yeah. he gives Vigo oh, yes! a sniper rifle. Yeah. <laughs> And Vigo sits in the limo backseat holding the sniper rifle like he's going to shoot out the window, I guess, at this guy. Yeah. Yeah. It was such yeah. a weird angle and such a weird shot. And, and the window was closed. Right? I didn't. And, and, and he, goes, he goes, well, I need to use it? And she was like, you'll know. <laughs> and I, I, the whole time I was like, how will he know? Yeah, exactly. I was like, With, like he doesn't know anybody. What is the tip off? Uh, by the way, I loved the... Italian Don character, like, couldn't have been a more over-the-top, like, uh, mafioso yes. from the 90s. Like, hey, oh, ooh, ye. What's the name of that stand-up comic who was like, Little Miss Muffet sat in a tuffet? Oh. Andrew oh. Dice Clay. If Andrew Dice yeah. Clay was a mob <laughs> boss, that's who this guy was. He was like, oh, gotta kill you, Yakuza. Like, it was, oh, my God, it was, oh, it was good stuff. It's good, good stuff. It, it's so, so... The movie was completely racist. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But by the way, that that mob boss guy, so he gets, like, he has one of his other little cronies come over to his house, and he's like, hey, you know how you get a house this incredible? And I was like, that's a house in Santa Clarita, and it doesn't look that incredible. <laughs> yes. like, like, the house. You, you get a, a well-paying job in yeah, a yeah. decent like, mortgage? Right, like, I, I save for, I put down a down payment, because, like, the Yakuza house, like, that's a legit house in yeah. Pasadena. But, like, yes. he's like. Like, I would not, sir, I'm so sorry. I would not describe your house as incredible. It's just what I'm going to say yeah. there. Even, even, like though you the... have a, even though you have a silent woman in the backyard doing leg lifts. <laughs> yes, that's I love right. the, And the backyard was only like 20 by 20. Like It, it was, was yeah. so small. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what you got to do, you got to go down to the bank and make sure you get a, like a 2.3 APR. Because there's no other way you going to support this house. Is... Ow! <laughs> I just wanted him to be like, yeah, my house looks just like this right now. So I don't know what you want me to, uh, I don't know. Oh my uh, God. Oh. Anyways. So, you know, Vigo obviously earns their trust over time. The Yakuza trust. You know, he gets, he finally, we realize he's an FBI, he's an undercover FBI, right? Oh, and oh. yes. that scene where they pull him out. And it's just like, that scene's like the bad scene where you're just like, it's because Robert Forrester, first of all, I was excited about. Right. Right. Yeah. And then like, it's, it's the classic, like, you can't, you can't just go rogue and he's like i'm gonna go rogue and it's like cool there's the seed Got it. <laughs> which by, by the way this great moment that that whole scene starts with the partner handler uh the uh the handler giving him shit for doing whatever it takes and then at the end of the scene he goes you're gonna have to do whatever it takes <laughs> <laughs> i'm like uh, wait what yeah the, 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 there were all sorts of missed messages in this movie because one of the reasons yes. tara i was surprised when i found out that he was an undercover fbi agent he had already killed like like six or seven people. Yes. Like, yes. like he had straight up murdered folk. Like it wasn't. It wasn't even and, those scenes where he like he winged them. No, no, no. Like he takes out two guns and guns some guy down here, shoots another guy there. Yeah. I'm like, how are you a law enforcement officer? None of that makes sense. He's not going to be held responsible, Adam. There will be no hearings for those original murders. We just take it as it goes. Yeah. They were bad guys. They were bad they guys. They were bad guys. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, guys. Ooh, fun. Fun fact, fun personal fact, uh, there is a club in the movie, um, which Mandy and I actually toured for our wedding venue. Um, (laughs) It was not designed as the club, and maybe that's why we didn't pick it, but... uh, (laughs) (laughs) But I remember I'm sitting there and I'm watching this movie and I go, I pause, I'm like, baby, come here, baby, come here. (laughs) 
<laughs> Didn't we look at that place like last Thursday? She's like, oh, we did look at that place last Thursday. There's the vault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, the, oh, uh, the oddly, enough, yes. oddly enough, the opening scene in that warehouse that they like destroy and like all the like big stunt action. I toured that warehouse the week before because I was looking for warehouses for the show I'm working on. Oh, I'm really? Like, oh. Look at this. <laughs> These locations have been used a few times in this movie is what we're saying, everybody. I've got, uh, can I just read you some of my notes? Because I don't know what they mean. Okay, sure. We'll try and parse it out for you. Okay. Vigo looks like a perv mostly throughout this. <gasps> How You take I, that back, Dave. You I take don't know that what back. I, I don't know why I wrote that. Okay, I get so, it, okay. though. I understand. There is a, like, if you don't, if you're not taken in by his sexiness, there is something that you're like, Are, you're just a weird man, aren't well, you? Well, you know what it is? His chin is yeah. impressive. And if you Beautiful. are not drawn in by that chin, you're sitting there going, what's up with that chin? Which gives the rest of his face a very sinister, you know, appearance. <laughs> Okay, so my next one is, and this um, obviously doesn't fit into this place, man. Looks like the extra from an early Billy Joel video. <laughs> what? Who was that in reference to? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, I have a note here about what Robert Forrester. Do you guys remember how he pronounced Yakuza? No, no. How do you pronounce it? Okay, so he's talking to Vigo. Like, this is towards, like, one of the later scenes. And he's like, you got to get out of that Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, did no one on set be like, hey, Robert, it's Yakuza. He's like, it's Yakuza. <laughs> and I was like, okay. We did right. 37 takes, and that was the best one. <laughs> Right, but they eventually. So like, so he's going. Ar- okay, so he's going around. We know he's an FBI agent. We see he's like, you know, d- trying to like take down the Italian mafia through the Yakuza. Like it's all gonna go bad. Fine. Okay. Yeah. So then he's he's too deep, right? Because now the girl is like they're trying to set him up with this girl. Which by the way, if you're under- like married, right? But by the way, if you're undercover, you don't have to have sex with her. But Vigo does. So because he, <laughs> oh, he has yeah, to go, yeah. he had to do what it takes. He, he had to do what it takes. Look, look Vigo commits to the part. <laughs> yeah. He's killing people. He's sleeping yeah. with uh, Japanese women. Yeah. Like he is. He's you know he's down down the clown. Yeah. You do get the sense <laughs> he's tactical. <laughs> you do get the sense that he is kind of falling in love with this culture. I mean, well, yeah. The, the the bonds he's creating in the movie, the bonds he's creating start feeling very real. Yeah. To the and, viewer. Yeah, and they and set up the good. fact I that think... he doesn't have like a family, and like his past relationship with his father was very trepidatious at best, and so you now you got his new father through you know air quotes father through the yakuza organization like he seems to be really forming a bond with him. right yeah. so so then they they make him a yakuza right like he they they yes. usher him in it's unheard of right like he's like and it's like a whole thing like it's done you know they do a ceremony he's made like yakuza and then they're like and now you can have sex with this woman and you and he goes like yes please i'll do it <laughs> yeah like, you know what? Okay. If they just, if they just hadn't put her in a full geisha outfit, Ugh, it was I so honestly gross. would not have had a problem with Vigo coming home to yep. her being like, "And now you're part of the family, so it's okay that we're together and we can have sex now." I would have been fine with that. I really would have. It would have been stupid yeah. and you know '90s '90s plausible. But the fact that they put her in the full <laughs> geisha outfit with the makeup uh, and so the hair gross. and the robe, it's like, oh my god. Uh, yeah. Thank, thank God they didn't have like a foot binding serum. Keep going. I <laughs> <laughs> that was the next scene. They cut that. They, they cut, cut that, that scene. Oh, good. <laughs> That's good. Cut it for time. Anyway, so he's made Yakuza. He's like has this relationship, and he's like, I got it. I'm in. You know, also I'm Yakuza, so I get a sword, and I'm going to kill everybody. He didn't say that, but he should have. Um, <laughs> but anyway. yeah, he didn't use a sword. Why didn't he use a sword? He's mad about that. Again, but you're Yakuza. Isn't that the whole point of being a Yakuza? Is then you get a cool ass sword? Oh, I thought so. I guess he had that giant knife. Well, yeah. It's not what I was hoping. Anyways, right. the long and the short is this. He, it like, wasn't picked... as big as uh, Tara was expecting. You know what I'm Size matters sometimes, guys. <laughs> That's just what we're. I know that people say it doesn't. They're liars. They're liars. Anyways. <laughs> so he, he, he goes off to like get some flowers and like, you know, he's going to live his life. And he is walking down the street and he gets like pulled 
into a van or a car and they take him back to FBI and they're like, That's the job's right, over, yes. the job's over, the Italian mafia is going to destroy the Yakuza, take them all out. So, so you're done. Good job. Go to like Mexico and have a vacation. And so like, he's like, I'm not going to do that. And they're like, you got to do it. And he's like, okay. Yeah. And then they let him go. And I'm like, so you got, you don't know your employee at all who's just become <laughs> a Yakuza. You're just going to let him go and say like, you're going to go to the airport, right? And Vigo's like, yep, sure bet. <laughs> Of course he's not going to the airport. He's going to go like help his Yakuza friends. Which, by the way, all of the death scenes at the end of this movie are outstanding. They are fantastic, <laughs> yes. over-the-top, <clears throat> slow-mo 90s death style. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. It, it was like John Woo directed it. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then, and then at the end when the, uh, you know, his father and the Yakuza dies, Viggo Mortensen, like, picks him up and carries him out a <laughs> yep. la the bodyguard. You know what I mean? Yep. Like the, yes, yes. And the yep. cops are just watching him go, just like, there goes a man who loved another man. Like, that's all it was. It was they didn't <laughs> yes. do anything about it. They didn't stop him. Didn't say anything. No. Just, <clears throat> but, like, he's but, FBI. But, the other guy's dead. You know what? None of our business. Right. Just more paperwork. <laughs> just more paperwork I don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. So basically, yeah, all the Yakuza die. Vigo comes out. He's like holding, you know, he's holding the body. And I was like, oh, look how tender the FBI can be. That's what I said. <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> Accepting. Look how nice they are. Well, and, and, and correct me, his girl dies, right? Yes, they yes. kill her. She's one of the first ones that he, he right, finds is like straight up dead. Which causes, of course, Vigo's, you know, rampage, which again, I think would have had more of an impact if he hadn't already killed like a dozen people prior to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I feel like the FBI should have a follow up with him. Like, how yeah. do you, it seems like you, you like, like a killing Like a deprogramming session. <laughs> Well, that, you know what? Like, That's the other part. He never quit the FBI. Like that no. was the scene I was waiting for him to be like, yeah. "Take my badge, my gun. I'm done." Like he did, like I assumed the next day he went back to work. Like well, he, he probably <laughs> did. <laughs> he probably did because again, they said you're gonna go on vacation, right? And he's like, "You got it, guys." And he's like, "Haha, just kidding. I'm gonna go kill a bunch of people, and then I'm just gonna come back in the next day because I I need a paycheck, I guess." <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Well. The guys at Quantico are like, "What do we do?" <laughs> <laughs> You talk to him. No, you talk to him. Look at that chin. <laughs> I can't get away from his chin. No, his so chin. Oh my uh, God. I love Vigo. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Oh. All right, Dave, I feel like we should rate this, but I Let's feel like it. Dave, Dave is like, I feel like Dave checked out on this one. No, I didn't check out. I here, Here's the thing. In all honesty, like, uh, one of the big things I was wondering is like, is there a gay subtext to this movie? <laughs> In that. Go on. The, the, uh, I, I felt like, uh, Shu and Vigo were in a relationship and that was the major relationship within the movie and it was close to a lover's relationship it was a father-son relationship Dave <laughs> see I didn't see it as that way especially the way he carried his body out at the end <laughs> okay. I was like oh this is there because wasn't wasn't Shu gay as well no because no. he was hanging out with the other guy no no he Shu had, had a girl yeah, yeah, I remember he, he wasn't ever allowed to marry <laughs> right oh I spaced out which, there. Which that, that could that could be a, a gay relation. You know, that could be a, a beard right there. In fairness, like, yes. no, no, baby, I, I love you. Was... I could never marry you or touch you in public. Like, but I love you. But I love you. So just theoretically, yeah. could be a cover. And and so the whole this whole discussion, I'm like was struggling. Like, how do I say this without sounding horrible? <laughs> because I felt like there was a stu- and and I didn't think it was bad or I thought it was actually added to the movie. Hmm. Interesting. That's all. Like much like you ever see nightmare on elm street 2 no no it's famously has a gay subtext to it okay and it, it's crazy and you watch it and you're like oh, why is he hanging out at a leather bar <laughs> and why is the, the the lead male a scream queen and there's all these things and there's a whole documentary about it really because it kind of destroyed this actor's life because it was uh the way it was like taken critically uh not acclaimed in Hollywood really huh. yeah it, it's fascinating and and so so i that's what i've been thinking about interesting huh i've right. looked into that movie i haven't seen yeah it is well i love nightmare on elm street movies so i'm too scared i can't watch those things i i i'd rather see vigo naked than a slasher movie what what if, what if what if Vigo was like naked? Vigo is the bad guy in a slasher movie. Are you gonna watch that? Um, that's that's a that's a ten percent yes, ninety percent no. <laughs> I know what ten percent you're watching. Though. Yeah, you do. <laughs> 
We should rate this. Let's, yeah, let's rate this. Before, this. Yeah, before Tara can't control herself. I, I need a moment. I need <laughs> I to get out of here. <laughs> she, she has to get to her recliner. <laughs> <laughs> I only like recliners with dead people's bodies in them. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, isn't that every recliner? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lazy boy's going to yes. come after you, Adam. <laughs> So we have a three-tiered rating system here. Uh, Cinema Craptaculous. This is the top. It's a must-watch. Craptaculous, totally watchable on a Sunday afternoon. And then Utter Crap, Hard Pass. I'll go first. Um, yeah. I'm going to give this Craptaculous. Uh, I was impressed with it. Uh, I, like Dave, thought it was going to be like a really low-rent, crappy, um, you know, gangster movie that was going to go straight to DVD or VHS or Laserdisc at the time. But um, surprisingly, it had some moments and some nice cinematography. Uh, couldn't get quite by the racism, uh, but still, all in all, an okay movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I'll go. I, 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 too, think this is solidly craptaculous. It was an enjoyable watch. Uh, I found it interesting. It had its, its... As long as you understand you're watching a movie from the 90s and the things <laughs> about the 90s are not going to change and they're just <laughs> are what they are and that we should watch it also just as like a as a societal, like, look how far we've come because look what we used to, like, not <laughs> even question. Um, yes. But again, a young Vigo, very compelling. I, I'm I am always one for a Yakuza storyline, so craptaculous. I'm I'm going to agree. I think this is a craptaculous. It it was very watchable. Um I I enjoyed I, I was dragging my heels on watching it because I was just it I thought it was gonna be a direct to video like Vigo's nobody kind of crap. And it was it was it was fun to watch. It you know, it's a good storyline. You have a Sunday afternoon and you want some Vigo time? Yeah, who doesn't? Who doesn't? (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, Vigo. Uh, thanks for joining us on this B-Side Cinema Craptaculous journey. This is Dave, and ever-present with me are... Tara. And the Wadama. Oh, boy. (laughs) Wow, what just happened? (laughs) I'm sad about it. (laughs) Whatever it was. Pizza pie! Hickory dickory (laughs) dock. Uh, don't pass up jumping into that streaming pile of crap on the internet. Uh, jump on in because you never know what you just might find. The ghost chin. You might find what? Adam doing Andrew Dice Clay impressions. <laughs> oh, dear God. Oh, I hope. <laughs> it's my Halloween because... costume, guys, for next year. It's going to be super relevant. Thanks again for joining us on our Cinema Craptaculous Presents B-Sides Journey. Subscribe to Cinema Craptaculous on iTunes or Spotify. And if you weren't totally offended, or even if you were, please rate us on iTunes. It helps us uh, get the Craptaculous word out there. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Craptaculous.